At the moment, a lot of the routers that broadband providers are sending their customers are a bit out of date. As a result, a lot of people are buying their own routers to upgrade their speeds. In this video, we've looked at some of the best Wi-Fi routers on the market in the UK at the moment, so you can get better Wi-Fi speeds and better Wi-Fi signal. Before we get started, make sure to use the links in the description to find the best prices on the routers we've reviewed on the market at the moment. Let's begin. So when buying a router, what should you look for? The first thing you want to ensure is that the router supports the latest Wi-Fi standards. Most routers that providers send you only support Wi-Fi 5 at the moment, but if you're upgrading, you can get a Wi-Fi 6 router, or potentially a Wi-Fi 6E router, or even Wi-Fi 7. This is the main reason you might want to upgrade your router most of the time. Having a better Wi-Fi standard will give you better speeds, and better signal, especially at long range. The next thing to consider is the speeds that the router supports. This is especially important if you have fast fiber broadband. So for example, if you have a 900 megabit per second plan, you won't be able to get the full speeds over 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi with this router. Over long distances where 2.4 gigahertz is used, you'll probably only get about 3 to 400 megabits most of the time, or maybe even a bit less than that. You also want to consider what speeds are on offer from the router's ethernet ports. Most routers come with gigabit ethernet ports, but some of the more expensive routers, especially the Wi-Fi 7 ones, will support 5 to 10 gigabits per second. You probably don't need 5 to 10 gigabits per second over ethernet most of the time, but if you're on Community Fiber's 3000 megabit plan for example, you won't be able to get the full 3000 megabits with this router's ethernet ports as an example, so it's just something to consider. Another thing to think about is whether you want to use mesh Wi-Fi. Mesh Wi-Fi is basically just using Wi-Fi extenders. You put different Wi-Fi extenders around the house, and then devices like your phones, game consoles, or smart TVs will connect the node with the best signal. This can be quite helpful if you have a large house, or if your house has a lot of brick walls, that Wi-Fi signal sometimes struggles to pass through. Some routers, like Amazon's Eero options, are designed to be used as mesh. You just buy however many you want, and they'll all work with each other. On the other hand, more traditional routers like this one will just work with that brand's type of mesh. So for example, with this TP-Link router, you'll need to use their one mesh devices if you want to add extenders to this router. So you don't need to get a mesh system immediately, but if you do in the future, it'll probably need to be from the same brand as the Wi-Fi router you buy. And speaking of brands, we also want to mention that it's important to stay with the well-known ones. This is pretty obvious to most people, but there's a lot of cheap Chinese stuff, especially on Amazon, and often it just doesn't perform as well, or you'll have problems if you ever need to use the warranty. We'd recommend staying with brands you recognize like TP-Link or Netgear most of the time. So the first router we often recommend people upgrade to is the TP-Link Axe 5400. It's not extremely expensive compared to some other routers, but offers much better Wi-Fi performance than you're likely to get with your default router. Very few other default routers offer Wi-Fi 6E at the moment, so by upgrading to the Axe 5400, you'll probably get better Wi-Fi speeds and signal, no matter what router you're using at the moment. And because it's Wi-Fi 6E, it supports really fast speeds, so you can get the most out of your connection, even if you're on a really fast plan, like Community Fiber's 3000 megabit broadband, for example. The one downside to this router is its ethernet ports only support gigabit speeds, so a lot of the time, the Wi-Fi might actually be faster than plugging into the router directly, which is a bit of a downside, but it depends how much you use ethernet. If most of your devices are on Wi-Fi, this isn't going to be a problem. TP-Link's router is pretty easy to set up, and the company's one mesh system is quite straightforward as well. If you also want to use TP-Link mesh Wi-Fi nodes with this router, but the best thing about this router is its Wi-Fi performance. It's a really great choice if you just want better speeds and signal without spending a huge amount of money. So Amazon has a bit of a different approach with its routers. They're called Eero, I think, I can never work out how to pronounce this. But basically, they just sell these individually, and you can connect them together to create a mesh Wi-Fi network. It's basically designed around the premise that you'll buy maybe two, three, or four of these, and put them around the house. That's why they only come with two Ethernet ports each. The logic is you'll just plug your computer or games console into the nearest node, so there's no need to have four ports on each one, according to Amazon. They don't cost too much for what they are, given they support Wi-Fi 6, and they come with the same Ethernet port speeds as the TP-Link router we just looked at. And Amazon has a bit of a guide here to say how many you might need, given how big your house is. But most of the time, we think this router isn't the best choice if you don't want to set up a mesh system. In other words, if you just want one router. Just because of the lack of ethernet ports. But if you don't really use ethernet, 
These routers are definitely serviceable on their own, just they're really designed to have multiple of them and then to connect them together, helping you get the best possible Wi-Fi signal. So ultimately, this router is a better choice if you have a larger house and want to get a mesh system set up without spending too much. So the downside to the last two routers we looked at is their Ethernet speeds are limited to 1 gigabit per second. For most people this isn't a problem, because the maximum speed from most broadband providers is 900 megabits per second. But these days, there are providers selling speeds faster than this, like EE and Community Fiber. In this case, you might want a router that can support faster speeds. The Netgear Nighthawk RS3000 is one of the cheapest options on the market that supports Wi-Fi 7, giving you speeds of nearly 10 gigabits per second over Wi-Fi. And it also comes with two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, as well as two extra 1 gigabit ports, ensuring you can get the most from your connection if you have speeds more than 1000 megabits per second. The reason we don't recommend Wi-Fi 7 more highly is just because of how expensive it is. For example, if we go to the Eero Max 7, which is Amazon's Wi-Fi 7 routers, they want to charge £600 for just one of them. Maybe by the time you're watching this it'll be a bit cheaper, but at the moment it means if you just want two it's more than £1000. By comparison, the Netgear Nighthawk allows you to get set up for less than £300, which is quite good value given the speeds it offers, and the fact it comes with Wi-Fi 7. Apart from the fact it's double the price of the first router we looked at, the only other real downside to this router is it's quite big. It's not that wide or deep, but it is very tall, as you can see. It's about 25 centimeters from here to here, so you'll need quite a tall shelf or somewhere to put it, but that's not a big issue most of the time. So thanks for watching, and remember, use the links in the description to find the best prices on these routers on the market at the moment. And if you have any questions about choosing a Wi-Fi router to buy, leave a comment below, and we'll get back to you.